sound in your <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynn Brown. Um, I'm also a resident of McGurk Street. Um, I am a high school guidance counselor. I've been one for, I think now, almost 16 or 17 years. Um, I grew up in this town, as have my family for many generations. Um, I have two children, which I forgot to mention last night. Sorry that I do that, because they're the most important things to me, as well as my husband. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but I want to make sure that everyone knows this is not just a McGurk Street issue. Um, this is a six-mile route that starts at Buell Lane Extension, continues down Gingerbread, goes King Street, McGurk, Cooper, Cedar, Collins, Akabonic, Town Lane, and then Old Stone Highway. See how ridiculous that is? If we have maps on our website, um, www.facebook.com slash savvh, that shows the route of the path of this ridiculous transmission uh, project. Um, P, we have met, we met initially with um, Mayor Rickenback and about 20 people from PSE&G um, to voice our concerns about three weeks ago, three to four weeks ago. Um, and we were asking questions like why, this is a, they told us this is a redundant line of um, transmission power that we need. We need to have this power go from East Hampton to Amagansett, those two substations, and it's going to provide power for the entire east end of Long Island. We said, well, okay, that sounds like something we might need. Um, maybe, maybe not, but why are we doing it the same way? If, if you're telling us we need this because we have to be more storm proof, we have to make sure that if one line goes down, this other line will kick in. Why are we doing it, number one, because the, initial, the primary line is down the railroad. So this line is going zigzagging through our neighborhoods with trees overhanging and things like that. How is that better and how is that going to kick in when a storm happens? To me, They've just created double the workload when there's a storm. If anything, the lines that they're creating now are going to go down before the line from the railroad. So then we said, well, if you want a secondary line or a redundant line, as they say, go down the railroad. That's four miles. That's two miles less than this current project that you're doing. Why can't we do that? So I read the star yesterday because this was... This is what they said. They said officials of PSEG Long Island have stated that the upgrade is necessary for its transmission infrastructure to withstand winds up to 130 miles per hour. Okay, we heard that before. They said routing the poles in proximity to existing lines along the Long Island Railroad corridor, as some have suggested, is unwise, they say, because the poles falling on one another could result in a region-wide power outage. So I read this and I thought, my God, they think it's better. They, they're saying that the poles are going to fall. They're saying it right here. And they're saying they're more concerned about those poles falling down and causing a power outage than those poles, which are 20 feet from our house, over, over our bedrooms. Our houses are 30 feet. The max is 32, 32 feet high. These poles are 50 to 60 feet high. Those poles are 20 to 25 feet from our house. So in a storm, which they say they're going to fall down, they would prefer that they fall down on our house and kill our kids and kill our residents than fall down on another power line and cause a power outage. That is ridiculous. I, we have been working nonstop. Um, as my husband said, we have this group, Savvy Stanton. It is growing in numbers. The word is getting out. We finally are getting politicians to kind of see what we're, getting, what we're dealing with, and they're supporting us. We've received um, Assemblyman Thiel has been unbelievably supportive. He has written to the governor for us, as well as State Se Senator Laval. The two of them have been extraordinary. Supervisor Cantwell, as well. From day one, he's been behind our cause and helped us out. And I saw your letter yesterday as well, Mayor Rickenback. I just want to, to take this into consideration. When everyone sees the light and decides that going underground and burying these wires is a solution to this ridiculous mess, don't let PSE and G dupe us again. 
saying the current route that is six miles long through residential neighborhoods past to historic sites and scenic vistas is the best demand that the wires be buried four miles along the long island railroad do not let them do two miles extra and charge us and the taxpayers that major court and and route 27 is also an alternate route to to consider major corridors that are least invasive and most beneficial are the reasons we should choose these two routes thank you thank you again we echo that we are in support of what you are trying to achieve we on the governmental side at the local level are trying to work with our legislative colleagues ken laval uh fred thiel and and the governor and let's see how the governor responds to this because I think for all the right reasons, he's got to step up to the plate. They just re released some monies vis-a-vis -vis Hurricane Sandy and his allocations. I would hope with enough drum beating inside government and outside that we, we can achieve a goal. I'm not pessimistic. I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay? So we hear you. We understand what you're saying. And let's see, once again, working together with town government, your colleagues here at the dais, and folks uh, that are sensitive if we can't achieve a, a common goal and again if we achieve this visibly underground i think i speak for the village board we would like any and all work in the future just by discipline it's all underground period okay any member of the board care to chime in I think we, we, all agree. Agree. Okay. we are